This is a CNIB Lake Joe at Home program. CNIB Lake Joe at Home logo, image description, an illustration of a marshmallow roasting in a campfire with a roof in the background. Welcome everyone uh, to CNIB Lake Joe's 60th anniversary celebration, part two. I'm Sherry Halsdan. I am the uh, lead uh, community engagement and team operations at CNIB Lake Joe, and I am thrilled to be celebrating this exciting milestone again. Um, we know it's been uh, sort of difficult over the last couple of weeks. Um, we have had to make a difficult decision to cancel our in-person camp programs for the 2021 uh, season due to the pandemic restrictions. Um, but what we know is that is not going to stop us from keeping connected and it's not going to keep us from continuing to celebrate two things that are super important, our war memories and our bright future at Lake Joe. Um, in fact, I think it's a real testament to our um, incredible camp community that we have on a bright sunny day. Um, over 50 people on this uh, virtual call with us. Um, I know we've got Maria in Vancouver. I know we have some folks on the prairies. I'm not sure how we, who we have out east, um, but love having that coast to coast. Uh, even though we're far, we're, we're close together on this call. Um, this is the second of our six anniversary uh, celebrations that we're offering. And I want to give a little shout out to my two um, sort of co-hosts, uh, Lindsay Garrett, who is the program Recording manager. Recording in progress. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. And uh, we also have Allie Fuch uh, with me. Oh, lovely, so we're a little threesome. Um, we will be sharing the Zoom spotlight, but we will also be joined by other members of the CNIB Lake Joe team. So you'll see everyone in the virtual walking tour, but just a little shout out so that you know we have the <laughs> on the call, Eugene Chong, our general manager, Kelly Hayes, guest services lead and office coordinator. I see them waiting. Um, I'm not sure if Mary Quick, our fabulous facilitators operator, was able to join us uh, or not, but anyway, welcome one and all. Um, Lindsay, do you want to take us through the, the program? Absolutely. Thanks, Sherry. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay, and I am the program manager here at Lake Joe. So while we're together today celebrating CNIB Lake Joe's 60th anniversary, I'm excited to announce that we're also celebrating another special anniversary. So May 12th marked the one year anniversary of the CNIB Lake Joe at home and our first ever virtual coffee break program. See some clapping, thanks everyone. Um, and thanks to all of you who join us every Tuesday. That uh, program continues to, to, to this day as one of our most popular programs. Uh, so the virtual programs over the past year have got us to where we are today, celebrating Lake Joe's 60th anniversary here on Zoom. Um, no matter what, we continue to find ways to learn, laugh and lift each other's spirits. Now today, we have another exciting hour of programming for you. So in April at our kickoff event, we heard some fun facts about Lake Joe from the 60s. Today, we're going to be moving through the decades and we'll hear from three people who are at Lake Joe in the 1970s. There you go, Michelle. And we have a very special guest speaker today. Following our guest speaker and a little bit of a movement break, uh, we're very excited to share a virtual walking tour of what is new at CNIB Lake Joe. We will wrap up with four speakers who are going to share their experiences in Lake Joe programs, and of course, a draw for a CNIB Lake Joe at home t-shirts. So following the program, we're going to keep the call open until about 3.15 for some more chatting and a mix and mingle. So Ali, over to you. Thanks, Lindsay. Hey, everyone. It's Allie here. So to get us started today, as we celebrate CNIB Lake Joe this month, we want to give a special nod to the 1970s by inviting people who were at Lake Joe as staff, volunteers, and campers to share their warm memories of Lake Joe from the 70s. So first, I would like to give a warm welcome to Karen who was a staff and volunteer and is now a part of our Lake Joe alumni. Oh, Karen, you're just on mute still. 
Um, there's an unmute button on the yep. bottom left corner. There we go. We can hear you now. Okay. I'm good. Yes, you are great. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, I just, there isn't a time in my life that, that I think CNIB has always been a part of my life. Uh, from a very young teenager when my older sister Kathy started volunteering. And then I followed in her footsteps. Um, and I began to work at CNIB, I think, 76 through 78, but I did volunteer before, but that's when I was a staff. And mainly waterfront, ski dock, that was the place to be for sure at that time. And um, I have wonderful memories of, of just skiing and, and taking kids up. And there's a beautiful picture of Kathy taking kids up that I think most of you have seen. Um, but it just me memories about the vacationers. I don't have a lot of names, but things that they had said that just stuck with me through the years, almost everyone had said this was their favorite week of the year and they looked forward to it all year. And they made me feel as a you know teenager just how special to be part of that joy in their life. And, and that really had an impact on me and it helped kind of shaped my choices and who, what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be with for, for the rest of my life. And um, so I continued with those sorts of programs and ended up uh, being a teacher for 33 years with at-risk learners and special education. And my heart always was, was pulled towards that direction. And I uh, have to mention my husband because that's where I met him, CNIB 1977. And I have a vivid memory of the ham radio guys. I, I don't know if many of you have that memory, but ham radio was a very big thing. And it was, they were years ahead of the internet. They were talking to people in Germany. In fact, they announced that Elvis had died. That's how I sort of mark when I, when I met my husband that summer. Um, and we knew before everyone because of ham radio. And anyway, and of course my daughter and we have 30, uh, we'll celebrate 37 years uh, being married this coming August 18th. And of course my lovely daughter, Emily, who is um, worked at, who has worked at CNIB as a counselor in various positions um, for several years in her teens. And it was so special to be able to live vicariously through her eyes and see the exact same experiences that that I that I had myself and and just oh just just moved us so much and um, Emily still works for CNIB in a different role she's in BC CNIB BC which is uh, kind of interesting kind of unique that she's still involved with CNIB and, and she spoke last week so I know a lot of people know her but um, I just can't emphasize enough how, how much this, that Lake Joe has meant to me and, and my time is up. <laughs> Was that a bell? <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much for allowing me uh, time to share that. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing those warm Lake Joe memories. And now I would like to invite Catherine who is a former Lake Joe staff and also now part of our Lake Joe alumni. Hi, and I'm also uh, Karen's sister. So that's, uh, we, we pretty well took up most of the 70s. I was there as a volunteer in, in 71 and then continued on to 1975. And what a wonderful experience. And what I can think the values that uh, we learned there were just to continue always to treat everyone with dignity, respect and kindness. And uh, the memories of the ski dock and the waterfront and the babbling brook and they, the boat was called the Annie G. I think what I've learned is it, it's had several names over the years. And what is so interesting is to uh, hear from people in the 80s and 90s and 2000s and onwards that have had the same similar experiences that my sister Karen and I, you know, she, she went on into teaching and one of my best friends 
also who was at CNIB went on uh, to work with, the, is still working with the children's aid. I particularly like the, the seniors. I couldn't wait for the seniors period when the vacationers would come. And so I chose a pathway into working with seniors, helping to keep them independent uh, and in the community as long as possible. And then went on to work with the Ontario government in programming and long-term care and mental health and hospitals. So, uh, I, but it all started with the values uh, that I learned from CNIB Lake Joe. So congratulations on the 60th anniversary and uh, shout out to everybody who has contributed and has had enjoyment from Lake Joe. Thanks. Thank you, and thank you, Catherine. And now I would like to invite Derek, who first attended CNIB Lake Joe as a young boy in the 70s. Thank you, Allie, and good afternoon, everyone. Yes, that's true. I, I CNIB had a day camp when I was a kid here in Toronto, and every year they would take a week up at Lake Joe, and this year, I had heard about it and I decided to go too. I always enjoyed swimming and boating and stuff like that because my family and I did so much of it when I was a kid. So I wanted to give it a try. I was only seven years old, so I don't remember a lot. One thing I do remember, Karen mentioned the ski dock earlier. In those days, the big thing was the surfboard. You were pulled around the lake on a, a surfboard by the boat. Uh, today, I, I believe it's the tubing that's the quite popular up there but I remember not being sure I wanted to do it at the time because I thought it was going to be boring I didn't realize the boat pulled you around so um I really um and that was fun I'll always remember that and so that was my experience in the 70s I've experienced all aspects of the camp I went in the 80s once to a teen week and I've been going as an adult camper since 1996 and they're the two weeks of the year I always look forward to as well. A lot, it's always good to meet new people, but it's always good to see a lot of the people that um, we only see up there once a year. We've, we've become like family, I guess you could say. So I guess that's why it's kind of hard to miss out on these summers up there. But we will be back there soon and I think we're all dreaming of and praying for the day we can be back in person again so so enjoy I think all we can do right now is make the best of it enjoy this this celebration and we look forward to uh, to a bright future thank you Absolutely. Thank you, Derek. Thank you to Karen, Catherine, and Derek for giving us a little blast from the past and sharing your warm memories from Lake Joe. It's amazing how a week or a summer at Lake Joe can make such a positive impact on your life then and now. So let's talk about the here and now. Sherry? Thank you, Ali. Uh, so it's my pleasure uh, to introduce you to our special guest speaker, today, uh, Vivian Chong. And I am actually going to have to pick up my notes because Vivian's uh, accomplishments are extraordinary. Vivian is a comic artist, one woman show producer, singer, songwriter, potter, yoga instructor, dancer, triathlete, but wait, there's more, and author. Um, her graphic novel that she just wrote called Dancing After 10 was shortlisted for the Toronto Book Award. Uh, listed as one of the best books of 2020 by NPR and was recommended by the New York Times. Um, some of you may know uh, Vivian because she's been a volunteer at CNIB Lake Joe for um, five years, um, among many things uh, as a yoga instructor, uh, running accessible yoga classes indoors and out. I know Vivian is now doing uh, virtual classes every day of the week nationwide. Um, Vivian's uh, vision is to help people, and I love this expression, harness wellness. Um, so it's my privilege, actually, to invite her to speak with you about physical health, mental wellness, and the magic of camp. Vivian, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Sherry. Um, hi, everybody. 
I can't see you, but I, you know, I know you're there. And I've been coming to Lake Joe over 10 years, not consecutively, but more often in the recent years. When I first was diagnosed going blind, it happened quite abruptly over 10 years ago. It was night and day. One day I can see, the next day I'm blind. And I know one thing, I need a vacation. And as I was practicing using my Viking, going into the CNIB Center in Toronto, and I found out there is a summer camp for people who are experiencing vision loss and they would accommodate people. I thought, wow, what a great idea. I have never even been to a summer camp. So there you go. Lake Joe was my many first. I had my first campfire at Lake Joe, my first mini field trip to out of town at Lake Joe, my first group of vision loss friends at Lake Joe and doing um, water skiing, kayaking and many other things. The pontoon ride with ice cream on top. It was just um, quite an experience when you are an adult and you get rewarded um, with your vision loss with ice cream on pontoon. And I thought it is a great way to turn a situation over when there are different enlightenment in life. So Lake Joe is definitely mine. I remember so many tactile sensation of going to Lake Joe, the cedar boardwalk, the fresh air, the texture of the sandy beach, the grass so fluffy and clean, the goose poops on the sidewalk, <laughs> and the sweetness of the Lake Joe water. Not that I intentionally try to drink water from Lake Joe, but, you know, when I first go to Lake Joe, I can't even swim, let alone tread water. I was walking in and out of the water. But as I developed my cane skills and as I becoming more who I am, my swimming got better. I was able to tread water. And then not only that, I can swim a straight line for a short distance before someone yelled to me, go left. Then um, I resume swimming straight. And then um, now I am a triathlete. And I think Lake Joe was my first open water experience swimming in a big lake. In the beginning, the support was helping me to create a boundary for safety, which I didn't know is needed as I didn't have the vocabulary to even advocate for myself what is needed for my safety. So Lake Joe has provided just that. There was lifeguards everywhere. And if you get lost, you can just look really lost and people would ask you, do you need to go somewhere? Mm -hmm. I remember when I first come to Lake Joe, I spent my first two summer getting really lost. I would often wander into the wrong cabin and try to open the cabin door and then go into the room by counting the door. And I would open a door that belongs to not mine, but someone else. And there will be someone else voices yelling out, hello. And then I quickly close the door. And you know what? That's okay. There were so many embarrassing moments, but it's all okay at Lake Joe. I learned that with vision loss, we are all going through it with different life experiences, different age, different intensity. And sometimes you just don't know where it's coming from and you don't know whether it's stay or go, but it's all part of life. I remember some of the smaller experiences. I encountered a person using a walker who was pointed out by me later. It's a walker cane. I have no idea what's a walker cane. A walker cane is a walker in front is painted two-tone. There is white and red signifying the person is having vision loss using walker. And I realized that I feel so appreciative of my mobility. And I also encounter people with different loss, with hearing loss, and they use an interpreter or sign language person, ASL interpreter. And there are people using wheelchair also going through vision loss. So I just really understand that you know, it is a journey for different folks. And 
no matter what age you are, Lake Joe has a place for you. I first went in in adult camp, and then later on, I was volunteering. And when I was going through as an adult, going to adult camp, I was realizing that water is actually very fascinating. It doesn't have to be a scary experience. When I first do water skiing in Lake Joe, um, I was asked to sit on the edge of the ski dock, and then I was equipped with ski boot and water ski, and I was waiting there. And then I was holding the handle, and then the lifeguard told me just practice saying, knee bends, back straight, arm extended. So I just keep saying it to myself until the sensation come over me when people count down one, two, three, and I jump into the water and the energy of me surging forward with the big pull from the boat. And it was quite amusing and very painful sometimes that I felt smacked down on my face, but it's all done with safety. Then eventually, I think the next summer, I had a good run on the water ski. I was able to stand up on the water and went around the lake. So I realized from that experience that, you know, many life experiences are our own individual journey and many things that we might not see is possible. It is possible. We just have to encounter the right people, right resources, and Lake Joe has that for you. And um, as I becoming a better king user, I also acquire a seeing eye dog. And as I becoming more healthy, I realize wellness is a big part of my mental health and my fitness and my well being. I study as a yoga instructor. I was determined to be certified no matter all the challenges that was around. I realized there was not one yoga classes were fully accessible for vision loss folks or blind people. And then I decided, you know, I am going to give really precise verbal cues one day when I grow up. So that's what I did. I developed a yoga program that is accessible for the blind community in the Foundation Hub in Toronto. And I collaborate with the facility. And now when the pandemic time, this program is on virtual space and there are so many students from every provinces coming to the class and we meet four times a week and I, establish three different ways that you can practice yoga. You can practice on a chair, you can practice on your mat, and you can practice with a flow on the mat. So we'll be experiencing that a little later today. But I also want to tell you, this program not only is available online, but when summer camp resume this program, it will be available for lecture participants on the family week and on the outdoor porch. That's what we've been doing for the past five years. And I really wanna thank Lake Joe for recognizing my efforts to allow me to create a wellness program. And I have just received my volunteers certificates for the Ontario Volunteer Award in my mail. So thank you, Lake Joe. I hope I'm holding it right side up. And, um, I want to also share with you that Lake Joe not only is for summer camp, sometimes we have some alternate programming. So I have attended the I Factor singing contest. Um, it was the second last year the program was offered and it, it is quite like American Idol, but it is Canadian Blind Idol. I was in the finalist and I remember the patrons will come in the boats from Lake Joe walk on the sand and then walk on a red carpet to come into a stage set up under a white tarp. And everybody was in a little tent and there was a big stage with a light band and the contestant entertaining the patrons. That was my first, or uh, one of the first public performances experience. And after that, I sang in so many campfire and talent shows with Lake Joe participants. And the end of this month, I'm offering a virtual Zoom live theater for my one woman show. So if you're not 
in Zoom or don't know about this programming, you cannot share it or go check out the Canadian Council for the Blind Toronto chapter for the Toronto Visionaries website. All the detail of the show is there and it's free for you. So it's my effort to break social isolation at this time so you can enjoy some life here at your living space. So lots of good things to come. And one of the other thing I want to share with you with my Lake Joe experience is the song and music with our campers. I remember sitting on a Muskoka chair sharing my original song composition with a teenager. And she was pulling out her iPad and she asked me to pick three numbers because she wrote over 90 songs and she want me to pick three numbers so we can pull out the number of the song and we listen together on her iPad. And then after that, she told me the reason behind each song she wrote. And we had a mini session of music appreciation together. And it was so special. And then another time I ran into three different families and the kids were there. So the mom asked me to pull out my instrument to sing them a few songs. So I did just that. And when I was singing, one of the kids from the family, Jordan was drawing me on a piece of paper with a crayon. And after that, he said, this is for you. So I took the piece of paper home thinking that, oh, I must look like the way I look now. I wonder what I look like now that he drew. And I asked somebody in my home environment and they pointed out the paper has a few blob and a few square. And then I realized that Jordan cannot see me. He's drawing me from his impression of me. And I thought, see, it doesn't stop us when you have vision loss. It doesn't stop you anywhere. You could still do everything in your mind's eye and with your full ability. And really, really moved me. And then in 2019, the most recent summer camp, I was um, performing talent shows with two groups of family. One family has two sisters. And I was singing my song, Doggy Doggy. And the sister was standing in front of me and they were waving their body and wiggling their butt. Uh, so to mimic the movement of a dog being happy and they were jumping up and down and it was adorable. And the um, parents would describe to me the video afterwards. And um, another family, um, as you know, family come in different shapes. So this other family, the mom and the dad and the son was on a wheelchair, the son is on the wheelchair and the caretaker also came along. So that's their family unit. And we sung the song, Don't Stop Believing. And they were just screaming the lungs out at the chorus. And I just feel so open and so moved. I don't even know where to begin to feel the impact of social integration. We are from different age group. We have different ability and we only met once a year, but it made so many, many wonderful, long lasting memories together. So thank you, Lake Joe. If you haven't been to Lake Joe, it's definitely an experience. Please come experience. And um, I would like to offer my mini yoga with you. So you'll get a taste of my virtual program. So I'm going to use the last five minutes to warm up your body before a walking tour for Lake Joe. So if you're sitting on your chair, move your chair a little bit back so you don't hit your table. And now I'd like to extend your arm out and flatten your palm and start circling your arms. And now reverse the circle keeping your palm flat. And now relax your arms and let's circle your head counterclockwise. Nice and slow, removing all the neck crunchies. And then take it to the other direction. 
Breathe in through your nose and slowly out your nose. Bring your head back to center. Inhale, raise your right arm up. And now use your left hand to hold on your right wrist. And now gently guide your right arm to point to the left. So you're doing a side bend to your left, stretching the right side of your body. Breathe into your lung. Inhale, taking it up. Exhale, relax and circle down your arms. And now raise your left arm up. Use your free right hand to hold on to your left wrist. And now do a side bending to your right. So point your left fingertips to your right. Feel the stretch all the way from your left fingertips down to your left sit bone. And then inhale up, exhale, circle your arms down. And now place your right hand on top of your left knee. And now slowly from the base of your spine, exhale and start turning your upper body to the left. Your head is the last thing to turn. Spinal twist. Exhale, return it to center. And now switch hand. Place your left hand on top of your right knee. And slowly exhale. Rotate your torso to your right. Look over your right shoulder. Inhale, come back to center. And now open your arms and circle it upward. Your palms to touch at the top. Exhale, bring your palms down to your heart. Let's do it five times. Inhale, circle your arms up, look up. Exhale, bring your hands down. Inhale, open your palms, circle your arms up. Exhale, down, last two. Inhale, up. Palms together, bring it down. Last time. Inhale, circle your arms up, meet at the top. Hand press together and then slide your hands down. And then give yourself a hug, crossing your arms over your chest. Self hug and squeeze, opening your back body. Ha, ah, exhale, relief out of your mouth, release your air. And you are done. And now I pass the ball back to Sherry for your walking tour. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vivian. That was awesome. I loved that, that final stretch. I was imagining us scooping up all of the positive energy, all of the positive learning and laughs and bringing it together to our heart. Thank you, Vivian, for uh, sort of illustrating for us how we can do anything um, if we just open our minds, open our hearts to the possibilities. Um, awesome, awesome, Vivian. Um, so now I'm all, uh, you know, limbered up, feel like I've got oxygen where I haven't had oxygen in a while. Um, I have to admit that when we started planning this uh, virtual walking tour, we, you know, it was early in April and we imagined that all of us would be the staff at least would be on site together and that we would be able to do this, um, you know, physically distanced, uh, but on site together. Um, sadly, that's not what ended up being possible, but you know what, as Vivian suggested, you, you got to get creative. And on the days that uh, they were on site, Eugene, Kelly, Lindsay, and Barry, uh, film themselves doing uh, showcasing parts of Lake Joe 
and Allie and Manik uh, did something pretty cool remotely. So we have, uh, as the end result, a fun video that I think you're really gonna like. It shows how even in a pandemic, the magic of keep, uh, sorry, the magic of camp keeps moving. And we actually invite you to sit back now. Maybe you've got a little drink or a little snack and enjoy this uh, fun view of the latest and greatest at Lake. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm the guest services lead and office coordinator at CNIV Lake Joe. I'm standing inside the welcome center in front of the tuck shop counter to let you know some good news. In 2020, we started our online camp store. So this is where you can go to purchase all of our tuck shop items online and have them delivered right to your home, which is pretty fantastic and a wonderful way to have a little piece of Lake Joe with you while you're at home. We sell, sweat we sell sweatshirts, t-shirts, toques, pins, travel mugs, all sorts of things. An example is this blue t-shirt I'm wearing right now. It's one of the Go Jump in the Lake t-shirts. So it has in big, huge font on the back, it says Go Jump in the Lake, which I know we all can't wait to do again. And on the front, it has a small CNIB Lake Joe sailboat logo. So these are $20. They come in blue or red. We also have stainless steel travel mugs, which were new in 2020. They come in a bronze charcoal color and also, or sorry, they come in a bronze color and also a charcoal color. These are $20 as well and have a beautiful logo with a pine tree, a full moon, and two crossed canoe paddles. And it also says CNIB Lake Joe. And we have these beautiful sweatshirts. So this is what we call our quarter zip sweatshirt. It's not a hoodie, but it has a zipper down the front about a quarter of the way, and then there's a collar, which can be left up or folded down. They come in this dark navy blue color, like the one I'm holding, or in a gray color. They have an embroidered section on the front top left that says CNIB Lake Joe and has the nice yellow sailboat, which is embroidered as well. So, newsflash, these are on sale. They're normally $40, but in honor of the 60th anniversary, we've knocked off six bucks. So now you can get these really nice sweatshirts for $34. They're wonderful, they're warm, and I'll admit I have them in both colors. So how to access the online camp store? It's one of these web addresses that's very long. So I won't bore you by saying it out loud, but I hope that Lindsay can type it out and put it into the chat for us and you could also visit the CNIB Lake Joe webpage and then scroll down and there'll be a link for the store there as well. So you can access it that way too. Uh, we do hope to have some new clothing and new items in for this summer for 2021. Uh, not quite ready with those yet, but stay tuned and you'll have to check back to the camp store for any new updates or new items. Um, and I just also wanted to share why the tuck shop and why the online camp store is important to us. Uh, it does provide us with some funding towards some of the programs we offer here and it really gives a way to, to share that sense of community and connection and, and to feel like you're part of it and to know that you're part of the Lake Joe team. Um, and in addition to that, it's also just a really wonderful way for you to have a souvenir of Lake Joe and your times at the camp and to think back on all those more memories and reflect on, you know, the positive impacts that CNIB Lake Joe has had on so many people. So it's really, really wonderful. So thank you again so much for joining us. I'm going to pass you along over to Lindsay, who's over here in the dining hall. So thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Kelly. Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay, Program Manager here at CNIB Lake Joe, and I'm coming to you today from the Dining Hall. If you subscribe to our e-newsletter, you may have already read about the Extreme Makeover CNIB Lake Joe edition. If you don't subscribe to the e-newsletter, make sure you check it out at cnib.ca slash lakejoe to keep up on all the latest news. Back in early 2020, CNIB Lake Joe was the recipient of an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant to upgrade the acoustics in the dining hall and lounge. Now, as many of you know, this is a space that is normally buzzing with activity. It's a space that we gather for meals, bingo, talent shows, and much more. And it can get really loud in here. In fact, a noise measurement was complete on this space during a meal with the old sound system. And it was found that the noise level got to between that of a vacuum cleaner and a chainsaw. So it can be really difficult to hear. This new acoustic treatment will buffer the background noise, 
make this space more accessible and allow us to be able to hear those who we're sitting with during meal times. All right, let's take a look at what's been done. So first thing you might notice is that the old sound barriers that looked like gym mats hanging from the walls and the ceiling are gone. And in their place, we have these new wood, sort of faux wood panels hanging from the ceiling. In the dining hall, it's now a bit of a dropped ceiling. There's new lighting throughout the dining hall and lounge, new ceiling fans to help keep the place cool, and a fresh coat of paint throughout. So we have this lovely gray beige on the walls. The wood paneling at the bottom is now a nice crisp white. And we have this beautiful new blue accent wall on the wall towards the kitchen. Now I'm going to take you for a little bit of a walk into the lounge so we can have a look at what's in there. And excuse the mess as I'm walking through, we have another project happening right now that's not quite complete. And I'll give you a sneak peek of that in a moment. So here we can see there is a lowered ceiling above the hallway. And as we get into the lounge, the wood paneling is right up on the ceiling. So we still have that beautiful A-frame here in the lounge. You can see the new lighting, brand new ceiling fans. It looks gorgeous. And for a sneak peek of the other exciting update happening in here, we are getting some upgrades to the fireplace just behind me here. We had some critters living there and it wasn't usable. So thanks to some generous donations, we are getting some upgrades and we'll be able to use that again soon. Thank you everybody for joining me here in the dining hall and lounge to see what's new. I'm gonna head back over to Jim's Tim's to fill up my Lake Joe travel mug. And I'm gonna send you outside to Eugene at the new Adventure Zone. Thanks, Lindsay. Hello everyone, it's Eugene Chong, General Manager of CNIB Lake Joe, joining you from the Adventure Zone here at the camp. I am currently standing in front of the cornerstone of our adventure programming, our new three route climbing tower. For the past few years, we've had to take our campers to other camps and facilities to engage in these types of activity. But now, thanks to our very generous donors from our 2020 Doc to Doc event and funding through the Ontario Trillium Foundation, we are able to launch this very exciting program here at Lake Joe. Working with our program partners at Challenges Unlimited, we were able to plan and build this accessible opportunity for all our user groups. The climbing tower stands 32 feet tall and the climbing surface is 12 feet wide. It has three routes of varying difficulty from our accessible green route on the right hand side of the climbing tower with these green hand and footholds to our intermediate blue route on the far left side of the wall with these blue hand and footholds to our most challenging red route running up the center of the wall which includes a three foot overhang that one must navigate to get to the top. This wall truly has something for everyone. I want to focus a little bit on our green route as this is the most accessible for our guests. The climbing surface has a slight incline where it isn't completely vertical. As well, it has cutouts on this wall where the climbers with less hand and foot strength can use these to make their way to the top. Additionally, these hand and footholds are a little bit more substantial, giving our climbers a little more to grip on. Now, if you look at the very top of this green side, there is a red belay bar that supports our climbers with lower mobility and core strength to be able to climb using a full body harness that supports them at an ideal distance off the wall surface. This challenge by choice activity is the ultimate team building experience as our climbers will be supported by others in their group with the use of these belay posts. We look forward to welcoming you back so we can get to climbing and pushing each other up to new heights here at the camp. The location of the climbing tower here provides us with the opportunity to continue to grow these challenge elements here at the camp to include additional high rope challenge elements to low rope initiative based programs in the future. There are many more opportunities to expand these activities here at the camp. Now moving over to the field, 
This will be the home of our new synthetic five-a-side soccer pitch and new accessible mini golf course. Currently, there are stakes in the ground to mark the footprint of the project and the work to level this field is scheduled to start next week. CNIB Lake Joe is the very first Canadian organization to be selected by the Synthetic Turf Council for their annual community service project. Thanks to the expertise and dedication of our volunteers, only the best available technologies and materials will be used on this project to ensure that the users remain safe and have the best possible experience while at the camp. From high contrast play surfaces and features to underfoot textural markers to provide feedback so our players will know exactly where they are on the field of play. These facilities will continue to open up opportunities for our campers and guests to get active and enjoy new experiences where they may not have had previously. As we continue to promote active living here at Lake Joe and increase opportunities for adaptive and accessible sports, we will continue to create opportunities for healthy living, confidence building, teamwork, and most importantly, fun. We can't wait to welcome everyone back to Lake Joe when it is safe to do so, and for you to all have a chance to enjoy this adventure zone. Now, let's check in with Ali at the sports court. Thanks, Eugene. Hey, everyone, it's Ali here. While well, I'm joining you today from my home with my tennis racket in hand, in my heart, I am virtually down at the multi-sport court at Lake Joe. The multi-sport court is located in front of the old manager's cottage, just down the pathway towards the boathouse. Up on the screen beside me now is an image from 2019 when the shuffleboard court and multi-sport court were under construction. In the image, there is the floor of the old shuffleboard court, as well as a digger digging up the ground where the new multi-sport court now is. This 1800 square foot multi-sport court was funded by the Canadian Tire Corporation with the help of an awesome CNIB Lake Joe volunteer, Roy Clementi, who helped make this project possible and completed in record time. Thank you. This project was completed by the end of the 2019 summer camp season. On the screen beside me now is an image of the completed shuffleboard court and multi-sport court. They both have a blue and yellow floor. There is black lines on the outside border of the shuffleboard court with numbers on the ground. On the outside of the multi-sport court are high nets around the four walls of the court and basketball hoops on either end. Some sports that can be enjoyed down here include basketball, tennis, badminton, and volleyball. I'm also excited to highlight today some new sports coming to Lake Joe thanks to the generous donations of the 2020 Doc to Doc fundraiser. Some of these sports include frisbee golf, beat basketball, and water inflatables. I can't wait to enjoy these activities back at Lake Joe. Up on the screen beside me now is an image of Lake Joe's staff, athletes and coaches from the Camp Abilities program doing jumping jacks during a morning stretch with beautiful Lake Joe in the background. The multi-sport court is very important. It provides adaptive sports opportunities, opportunities for team building and physical fitness at Lake Joe. I can't wait to be back at the multi-sport court enjoying some fun activities, but for now, let's check out what Monique is up to down at the campfire. Hello everyone, I'm Monique Pilkington, Executive Director, CNIB Lake Joe, and I'm excited to talk to you today about our pizza oven. On my Zoom background is a collage of photos from our virtual program during our Doc to Doc event in August 2020, with Eugene standing in front of the pizza oven and Lindsay serving up some delicious s'mores pizzas. Our wood-fired pizza oven is located near the campfire at Lake Joe. The design is a Mediterranean igloo and is shaped like a dome. It has a beautiful painted stucco finish in a soft butter yellow color. The pizza oven sits on a steel frame and our plan is to eventually enclose the base with stonework, creating a place to store wood. We are also fundraising to build raised gardens near the pizza oven to grow herbs and cherry tomatoes to be used in our pizza recipes. Nancy and Steve Simino donated the pizza oven to Lake Joe in August 2019. And thanks to their generous gift, 
our outdoor cooking program has been greatly enhanced. Close to 200 people enjoyed the pizza oven in 2019, and it was the highlight of a virtual dog to dog party hosted for campers in August 2020, as we shared tips for making pizzas at home. You might be wondering how the pizza oven works. To fire it up, we stack hardwood like maple or oak in a log cabin formation in the middle of the pizza oven, and the fire is allowed to burn for up to two hours before cooking to ensure the entire oven heats up. Once the temperature of the cooking surface gets to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit, the embers are pushed to the back of the oven and the ash is brushed off the cooking surface. And with that kind of temperature, pizzas cook in a couple of minutes. Depending on how the wood burns, a log may be added every 15 to 30 minutes to maintain the heat between 700 and 800 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want a less crispy pizza, it can be cooked between 500 and 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Cooking temperatures will vary depending on what we're making, like roasts, breads, and pastries. Enjoying the pizza oven at Lake Joe is a special treat and has quickly become a big part of our camp culture. It has created wonderful new ways for campers, staff, volunteers, and guests to come together, share stories, enjoy nature, alfresco dining, and build new skills like outdoor cooking. We look forward to sharing a pizza with you when everyone can come back to camp. For now, we'll hope you'll join us around the pizza oven and campfire at one of our virtual campfire programs. Let's join Barry now at the waterfront. It's very quick, the facility operator here and Willow, our ambassador dog, sitting beside Bill's tree. It's starting to bud. As you can see, camp's really starting to green up. The Voyager's still covered. Chairs are still stored on the sidewalk. We got to get uh, everything ready for another season. Get the canoe dock out. Hopefully we'll have our new rescue boat down the road that our staff fundraised for during last year's dock to dock event. We're coming along the waterfront here. There's a pair of loons out swimming in the water. I'll give you a little view. Our beautiful camp. So hopefully we'll have the buoys and docks in in the near future once it warms up a little bit more. Uh, we're looking forward to our, our new 150 horsepower Yamaha going on the pontoon boat. It'll get uh, everyone to the ice cream quicker. There's our sports court, kayak racks, everything. We won't be long and we'll see some boats on there. So we're coming around the corner here. Coming down to the boathouse. Nice view of the water. Just the loons were a little closer, but they're quite a ways out there. I'm starting to lose my breath here. <laughs> so I'm coming to the end. I better stop. Off to you, Sherry. Awesome. So, um, I'm pleased to report that Barry did not go off the end of the dock uh, into the lake. And I'm also pleased to report that no staff members were harmed in the filming of this video. I think um, we may have been harmed a little bit in the executing of the video on this uh, internet uh, bandwidth, but uh, we, thanks to the power of technology, will also be able to re-edit that a little bit so that when we post it on CNIB Lake Joe's playlist, you'll be able to see everything smoothly from start to finish. Um, I think the, the audio is really great though, and I know I learned more than I knew about outdoor pizza making and uh, climbing the wall, literally. Um, we can't wait until we're able to all be together, uh, you know, in person to sort of play with all the bells and whistles at Lake Joe. Uh, but in the meantime, I do want to pass you on to Allie, who has a few more treats for you um, as part of this uh, session. Allie. Sorry, I started talking and I wasn't unmuted. Thank you, Sherry. Um, that is right. We do have a few 
fun more uh, more fun things planned to wrap up this afternoon. We wanted to end this session on a high note, and we have invited four people to talk about what Lake Joe programs mean to them. So first, I would like to introduce Lisa, a guest who attends our adult programs at Lake Joe. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa. I've been coming to camp since 1986 and absolutely love it. My only regret is that I didn't know about camp when I was a child. As someone with vision loss, I don't think there's a better place you can go than Lake Joe. Um, if it wasn't for Lake Joe, I wouldn't have the opportunity to try things like biscuiting, canoeing, kayaking, or even going out on a catamaran. Over the years, it's been wonderful meeting new people, connecting with old friends, and the staff have been wonderful. If I was granted one wish, my wish would be that every single person that had vision loss could have the chance to experience going to camp. Happy 60th anniversary, and here's wishing you many more years of success. Way to go, Lake Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing. And now I would love to introduce Maria and her daughters, Sophia and Olivia, who attend the CNIB Lake Joe Family Program. Um, hi, Allie. Uh, we started attending Lake Joe, what was it, 2016, and uh, have been back ever since. I have to say, after seeing that walking tour today, I have two young ladies who are really missing camp. Um, as a mom, uh, what I love about Lake Joe is it's so inspiring for everybody. Um, it was great to see Vivian on today. And uh, one of the things that I think we have taken back from camp uh, the most is that anybody can do anything. And that's what I personally love most about Lake Joe. How about you ladies, Liz? I like the lake the best. Me too. Yeah. In fact, Olivia is inspiring to uh, get her lifeguarding so that one day she can work on the lakefront <laughs> as a lifeguard. Sophia? Anything you'd like to add? Um, what does like Joe mean to you? Um, it's a um, great place um, to like meet people like me, like who have vision loss. I am the, I am the like re not the reason why we go, but like yeah, why <laughs> like why we're able to go, mm -hmm. mm, and it's like. Like such an amazing camp. All the people are so friendly, and like I love meeting new people and like meeting like friends there and like reconnecting with friends from like previous years and things like that. And I really miss camp during the walking tour. I kept saying, "Now I want to go back even more." Maybe yeah. No. That's it for us. <laughs> Hope to see you guys really soon. Thank you so much for sharing, Maria, Sophia, and Olivia. I also hope um, to see everyone back at camp soon. And now I am happy to introduce Alicia, um, who has attended the um, youth programs at CNIB Lake Joe. Thanks, Allie. So hi, everyone. Um, I'm Alicia, and I have been a camper at Lake Joe since 2012, and I was about 13, 12, 13 at the time. Um, I went to uh, camp when I was transitioning from elementary school to high school, and then when I was transitioning to high school from college. Um, Lake Joe was, and its programs were always there for me and a place I could connect with youth just like me, where I where I live um, and go to school, I don't really have, a, like, I, there's not a lot of people with vision loss there. So there weren't many, a lot, there weren't a lot of times to be able to connect with um, people who have similar experiences like I do um, on a daily basis. So going to Lake Joe introduced me to so many other youth with vision loss 
that where we could share our, our similar experiences with each other and feel safe at the same time without judgment. I actually met three of my best friends through Lake Joe um, and forever grateful for that um, too. Lake Joe throughout the years has be uh, years become uh, made me become the person I am today. Through the program I did in 2019 called Leadership Development Program, I was able to learn about leadership, um, public speaking and advocacy. And because of this, I am now a public speaker and a motivational speaker within my community and recently across Canada, um, sharing my story and advocating for others. To me, these programs have been the best experiences of, of my life and a place I've grown to call my second home. And I can't wait to return when, when everyone's safe. And yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you for sharing those experiences and what Lake Joe means to you. And now I'm very excited to introduce Jennifer and Mike and their children, Ella, Ian, and Sean who have been participating in our CNIB Lake Joe at Home virtual programs. We love Camp in a Box because even though we couldn't be there in person, we, we, we still had a lot of fun. Opening the box was the best part because it was full of all sorts of activities and crafts that we can do with the other counselors and campers. We also had fun at the virtual campfires because we, we, get, we heard other people sing and perform. We can't wait to do it again this summer. Thank you so much and thank you for sharing. And we have also enjoyed having you perform at our virtual campfires along with us. Thank you for sharing that. Um, a big thank you, Lisa, Maria, Sophia, Olivia, Alicia, Jennifer, Mike, Ella, Ian, and Sean for sharing your experiences and what Lake Joe programs mean to you. To learn more about CNIB Lake Joe at home programs, visit cnibLakeJoe.ca.